Well, you do that, it's going to learn to like skills 13 through 15, just manipulate the advantage of it, but that's for another time. So, um, if on that list, what's it, icebreakers is number three? Yes. All right. Tonight we're learning just a little bit about icebreakers. We're going to learn our second one pretty soon here. And like I said, there's a hundred different icebreakers in the skill you could use, but you don't need them all. We'll just do enough tonight so you can get 60 or 80 percent of the people. That's enough, right? Mm -hmm. Will that be okay? Yes. Yeah. Right, you can learn the rest later when you're rich or hire somebody to learn. But you need to be learning the other skills when you can because after you do the icebreaker, you might want to say something, you might want to close. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, leadership, getting them to choose people. So, you're at a party. By the way, is, uh, did I offend anybody earlier? So, okay, we continue to talk directly outwards. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't mean to be offensive, but we don't have time to be politically correct. <coughs> and if anything I say offends you, just tell me, just say worship the company brochure at all. We'll feel better, right? <laughs> uh, are we okay with doing this? Yeah, right. let's go. Now, we can learn the skills. Uh, I'll tell you some ways to learn it. Number one, I've been in the business over 40 years. 40 years of scar tissue all over my body. And, uh, do you think after 40 years you might pick up something? <laughs> you can even learn to play the piano in 40 years, couldn't you? Yeah. So one way is, is trial and error. And if you like trial and error, scar tissue, and uh, basically I'm a nerd. Not that I'm talented or anything. I just kept track of all the stuff that worked and all the stuff that didn't work. Because I know social life plenty of time to catalog. <laughs> So I'll just pass on the stuff that works. Are you all right with that? So one of the ways you use uh, trial and error. It's expensive, takes a long time, but what's 40 years from now? 2052, that's a good year. Right. Uh, another way is any readers here? People like to read? All right. I'm a reader. I love to read. Uh, I'm not much of a listener. Uh, you got 25 skills there. Go to Amazon.com when you get home. Buy four or five books on the first skill. Figure out your way, start doing it, right? And then buy four or five books in the next skill, figure out your way and do it. And if you're a reader, excellent. I don't recommend reading, I'll tell you why. It's apparently, it's illegal to read while you drive. <laughs> <laughs> and the third way is by audio. And I like using audio, even though I'm a reader, because people can learn the skills while they drive their automobile. And they never steal time from home, they never steal time from home. <coughs> So that's how I like the distributors to learn. Because they already have 24 hours a day to take it up. Like, oh, damn, damn. So I use CDs. And I've done the, I put it all on CDs because I kind of figured out I did the hard work for people. So if you like to learn by CD, that's a great way of doing it. Uh, another way is invite your sponsor over who knows the 25 skills. Invite them over for dinner. And when he's not looking or she's not looking, handcuff them to the table. Need them for three months when they teach you the skills. You know, <laughs> I don't care how you decide to learn them. What I do care is if you decide to make money that you do learn the skills. Just, can you imagine trying to go out and meet people without these kind of icebreaker skills? What would that be like? Oh, fool. Yeah. Car crash. Yeah, like it's been heartbreaking, right? It'd be ugly. <coughs> yeah. I mean, you'd be missing out like a whole ton of money every day. And you'd be end up working for low pay jury duty salary. <laughs> so, by the way, if you get picked for jury duty again, what do you think? A <laughs> cheat. <laughs> and you saw how long your sales presentation was, right? Did you get that? As you learn better skills, your sales presentation will, in your case, how long did it take? You said uh, it was timeless. Um, I'm just curious, would you like a more electric bill? Oh, yeah. Well, I just found out how you can do it by filling out a one-page form. Really? Would it be okay if we fill it up now? Eight seconds. So that's the icebreaker that closed the entire sales presentation. Eight seconds. What are we going to do with the rest of our day? <laughs> <laughs> do it again. There's two levels of doing this business, right? Who will be the time? So, let's move on. You're at a party. Anybody here been to a party? Yeah. Yeah, at the party, there's a specific rules. 
Uh, I think it's somewhere in the Constitution. If you meet somebody at the party, the first thing you have to ask is, uh, what is your name? Then you're supposed to ask, where do you live? And then you're supposed to ask, what do you do? Right? Now, is it in the Constitution? 28th Amendment. 28th Amendment, yeah, okay. So, uh, when somebody asks you what you do for a living, do you think your answer could turn into a good prospect or a bad prospect? Good prospect. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what happened when I first got started. People asked me what to do for a living, and I think about this. I want to tell them about network marketing, right? <laughs> they say, what do you do for a living? And I say, well, you know, uh, I'm in network marketing. It's, you know, it's not like having a job or, you know, like being a carpenter or something like that. You know, you buy a wholesale, sell and retail, the differentials gross profit, not the net profit, because you get to take tax deductions and tax benefits there. But you build a multi-generational income here, not just the likes here by the the secondary stream. And then, but become a distributor, then a general, then a Star Trek commander. Once you have four different kinds of doing that, you can do it. What do you think happened? You lost me. So you think my answer turned into a good or bad prospect? Because they didn't want to know all that, did they? They just want to know, like, you're a car. Right? Something simple. But network marketing is not simple. You can't, just can't say, I'm gonna, you know, they don't understand. So what ended up happening is, when they asked me what I did for a living, you know, after a while, I couldn't think of what to say. They said, what do you do for a living? I go, well, what, what an idiot. He doesn't even know what he do for a living. <laughs> so I got tired of that, so I said, well, man, this is embarrassing. Maybe we'll change the They asked me, what do you do for a living? He said, well, I, oh, look, there's Superman. <laughs> but that wasn't making me any money. Do you think other distributors have this problem? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What are you for living? I'm a distributor for the wonderful company from the wonderful... No. You and I realize we create prospects. But we have to know the exact sequences, the exact words to say to make money. You can't fake it. So if somebody asks you what you do for a living, how are you going to answer? <laughs> Normally, I'm embarrassed people by saying they're here party right now, asking them what they do for a living. People sweat and get embarrassed, but then they get struck in front of me in the parking lot afterwards. So, can we skip that one? <laughs> and just tell you exactly what to say. Now, I'll give you a couple options on this. The first one is the oh, really how does it work technique. In other words, they're going to ask you what you do for a living. You're going to tell them what you do for a living. And they're going to react by saying, oh, really? How does that work? I'm going to ask you. If they said, oh, really? How does that work? You take it from there. Sure, that'd be breezy, right? So all you have to do is figure out what answer is going to get them to say, oh, really, how does that work? And you got to figure out the exact words to say. <coughs> Would it be okay if you wrote it out? Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you find that easy. Yeah. Right. So here's the exact words. You're going to say, and this is breaking. When people ask you to do further, you're going to say, I show people how Two. You don't have that? Five words. I show people how to. By the way, any of the sequences I've used tonight, too difficult. I think five words is the longest one so far, right? In a couple weeks, we can probably memorize one. <laughs> <laughs> but are they all effective? Laser effect. So you say, I show people how to, and then just fill in the blanks. Ready to try it? You're going to ask me what I do for a living. I'm going to say I show people how to blah, 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 blah. And if it sounds interesting, you will tell me, oh, really? How does that work? Are you all ready? Ask me what I do for a living. I show people how to get an extra paycheck every month. Oh, really? Ask me again what I do for a living. I show people how to fire their boss and start their own business. Oh, really? Ask me again what I do for a living. I show housewives how to earn more money part time than their house. Have you heard these before? <laughs> Are they all written down? Yeah. <coughs> I'm picking these because it's the most efficient way of going through a whole bunch of numbers. Right? Because you write one set of answers for benefits, fill in the blanks, right? So if somebody asks what you do for a living, all you have to do is say, I show people how to, blah, blah, blah. They're going to say, oh, really? How does that work? And then you pop into a two-minute story, one-minute presentation. <laughs> two sentences in eight seconds like her. Uh, cool with it. So, 
Everybody ready? Turn to your partner, ask them what they do for a living, and here's what your partner's going to say. I show people how to. Let me check my notes. Let me pick my Are you all ready? Grab your partner and ask them what they do for a living.